Hi, I'm Trevin Wax. I'm publisher for Holman Bibles. I'm also a teaching pastor, and we're excited to have you join us today for a conversation about the Christian Standard Bible. Uh, we're excited to be able to inform you as pastors, as ministry leaders, teachers, about this new translation, what the translation is, and how you can best use it. And I'm Brandon Smith, the spokesperson for the Christian Standard Bible. And uh, Trevor, you know, pastoring as long as I did, I obviously love the Word, love preaching the Word, love teaching the Word. Uh, having the opportunity to come work at Lifeway was great because when I got the call and they asked me to come here, you know, I was excited to know, hey, I get to work with the Bible. I mean, of all things, I get to work with the Bible. And as I've been here, we, you know, we've learned over and over again that Lifeway is all about the Word of God. That is the key to everything that we do. It's true. One of our core values is that we, we want to root everything in Scripture, right? We want to be trustworthy when it comes to uh, um, what we teach, what we uh, put out, and uh, all sorts of different things that we do with curriculum and books and uh, events and all sorts of things. But uh, when it comes down to it, the Bible is the most important thing uh, about what we do. It's the greatest stewardship that we have is that we're able to, to work with the Word of God and, um, and that's what's really what's exciting about this translation, I think, is that, that we get to, to steward a translation that is faithful to the original and also very readable in contemporary English. Yeah, and you know, we, we see research all the time that talks about, you know, why do people uh, have trouble reading the Bible? So we know across the board that people own Bibles, that people have Bibles on their shelves, right? Uh, but we also know from stats that we see all the time that, that they're not always reading the Bible. Yeah, I, th right? I think the statistics show like something like four, uh, the average American has 4.7 mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bibles on average. I don't know what the 0.7, what, <laughs> maybe a New Testament, right? Yeah. Uh, but they have, they have uh, uh, several Bibles in the house, but when you actually look at the percentage of people who are actually engaging mm -hmm. the biblical text, it's, it's kind of frightening to see that most people don't. Yeah. Uh, it's relatively few, the number of people who are actually reading the Bible in a given month or in a given year. Yeah, and you know, from Brad Wagner's book, uh, The Shape of Faith to Come, and all the research he did there, the one thing that we learned from that book, uh, which is a really helpful book on, on research, was that discipleship does not occur apart from the Word. Right. Uh, that people are not growing if they're not reading the Word. They can pray, they can go to community group, they can go to church on Sunday, but if they're not digging into the Word, then they're not growing. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that um, that book had a lot of statistics that backed up a lot of what we already believe to mm -hmm. be true theologically, right? right? That, the, that the central aspect of discipleship is, is Bible reading. So what, one of the neat things about uh, the research in that book was it, it showed a number of really good spiritual activities, mm -hmm. activities that across the spectrum of what a Christian would be uh, expected to do, but the number one best indicator for what would actually lead people to be involved in other activities, such as you know prayer or serving in the community or uh, uh, leading a, a small group or involved in uh, um, church attendance, uh, all, all sorts of things. The number one indicator that you would be involved in those other things was also right. Bible engagement. So yeah. Bible engagement is important not only for the, the the disciple, but then also the other activities that constitute you know what a, a disciple of Jesus Christ would be involved in. Yeah, and as, as two guys that, that have been in ministry for a long time, and we we know that when the people in our congregations are not reading the Word and not digging into the Word, that they're not growing. You can see that all the time. Um, but also, we also know that, that part of the reason why people don't read the Word is because they get frustrated. Uh, when they get into the text and they don't know what it means, maybe they read an Old Testament narrative or they read something in the New Testament and, and they know that they want to know what it means, but they don't quite understand it. And that, that seems to be over and over again in research shows, you know, that, that that's the frustration. That's the number two frustration. The, yeah, time, yeah, time, time is number one. Now, we, busyness, can't, we can't create a Bible translation that creates That gives time. more time. Yeah. Oh, that's true. But, but the Bible frustration of, of having a hard time reading it, that's something that we can Difficulty we can understanding, with. not knowing how to get, in, get into the Word, not understanding what they're reading, that is a, a, a big point. And so there have been a number of Bibles that have come out that have tried to resolve that issue, like saying, you know, we're going to be as as absolutely readable, easily understandable as possible, even into like paraphrases rather mm -hmm. than just translations. But um, but then that creates another problem of its own in, in some ways. So when I was um, uh, a pastor, uh, before I was in the place that I'm, I'm currently serving as pastor, one of the, 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 the frustration points for me was I had a text, that a translation that I preached from that was uh, very literal, mm -hmm. word for word, very solid for me, as a preacher to be able to, to go to that text and be able to unpack that what that means uh, for my congregation. But then whenever we would have people come to the church that were new to the Bible or uh, new to the church, maybe they were re-engaging after a long time away, but they were, they, they were coming back to the Bible as adults. Maybe they hadn't uh, uh, engaged the Bible in years and years. Uh, I, I would hand out 
these very, very dynamic, right. thought for thought, readable translation, just because I wanted them to get into the word. And I didn't want that second, that number two reason that people say is the reason they don't read the Bible, uh, the fact that they're frustrated, they can't understand it. I didn't want them to hold, yeah. I didn't want that to hold them back. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I don't think that uh, this Bible that I'm preaching from week to week that is really solid for me as a preaching text is actually the most understandable, right. the one that I can give out to the same person. So I had that pain point of knowing they're gonna be bringing a Bible that is different than the one I'm mm -hmm. preaching from, and yet um, the, the the really dynamic Bible isn't solid enough for me to preach from. And you and know, at the you same know that time, you're not going to be able to just stand there and walk them through the one that you're preaching from during the week. Right? That's right. I can't there. be over their shoulder yeah. explaining. Every, so so that that frustration point of of um, some texts being very faithful to the original, uh, very literal in their translation, and other texts being very very readable, but not but sometimes leaving the the original text in certain places. That that frustration point has been something that I felt as a pastor, which is one of the reasons I'm I'm excited about the the CSB, the Christian yeah. Standard Bible. So with the CSB, what we want to do at the end of the day is help fight that frustration, that frustration of not being able to understand the word. Uh, but more than that, we want to grow the number of people reading the Bible. I mean, this isn't just about uh, us trying to compete with other translations or us trying to get in fights and insult other translations. It's about us trying to lift everybody up so that, that people are reading the Word, that they're getting in there and that they're growing in their faith. Yeah, sometimes people ask me, you know, Trevin, what, what do you think is the best Bible translation? And my response to that, I mean, you expect me now with Home of Bible Publishers <laughs> to say, oh, the CSB right. is the best. No, my response to that is always to ask, well, the best for what, mm -hmm. right? Because different translations serve different purposes. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so some translations will serve a, a different purpose and are really useful and good right. in the purpose that they serve. So what excites me about the CSB is I think in, in this case, uh, we have a, a good default translation. It's the kind of translation that is uh, literal for preaching, for teaching, for Bible study. This is a translation that's also highly readable, that you can share it without uh, uh, any fear that someone's not gonna be able to understand it uh, themselves and that it can serve both of those purposes. So. Uh, the beauty behind this translation is 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 we can answer the question what what if there was a translation that you didn't have to choose right. between uh, literal faithful to the original languages and also readable clear in contemporary English and so the heart behind the CSB is to answer this question wh what if we didn't have to choose between a translation that is literal faithful to the original languages and also highly readable, clear in contemporary English, a kind of Bible that you can share freely and know that people are going to understand it. So next we're going to actually dig down into what the CSB is, and we're gonna answer some questions about this translation and its usefulness.